Are we ready? Let's do it. This week, I finally figured out what camera gear I need to get. Yes, cue intro. What is up guys, my name is Alex Caves and welcome to another weekly update. Over the last two to three months, I've been diving head first, learning the art of filmmaking and studying the experts, trying things out on my own and acquiring the proper gear to be able to do what I want to do with YouTube. I'm slowly improving my skills in filming, lighting, audio, and finally narrowed down the minimum list of equipment I need to produce videos of great quality that is up to my standards. I have a pretty high standard. <laughs> and so what I'm doing with this episode is to share you my tool list and what I plan on getting for this channel. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there that talk about the essential tools you need for YouTube, but I didn't really care for those because what I wanted was something that could last me a long time. And so my research was focused more on what the professionals actually used for their filmmaking. And if you guys are looking into doing the same thing and is serious about this, maybe this list will work for you as well. So with all that information, uh, here's what I chose for my gear. So let's talk about what I've purchased already. The first thing is I got a nice tripod to replace my old one. The old one was falling apart right here. See? <laughs> the next thing I got is a high quality shotgun mic. I got the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. I have it right above my head right here. Pretty expensive, but it came with the boom stand so that I could have it away from the camera and still have crisp sound. That's why I sound so good. Of course, I still have my old Hackstar, $25 one. It's backup as well as a recorder. I also got very basic studio lighting, which is standing right next to me here, projecting the light onto me right now. Nothing fancy, but it works. And for my secondary camera, I traded my old GoPro Hero 3 Plus to the brand new Hero 7 Black. Quite the upgrade from the, the old Hero that I had. I also got the uh, battery charging package with it. So it came with an extra battery. So now I have two batteries. And then lastly, for my current primary camera, I'm using the Canon T4i, which came with the battery pack. So it's the battery lasts twice as long. It came with a 50 millimeter lens from Sigma. And I got that for around 450, which was a great starter, but I had to get a new lens for it, a brand new uh, 10 to 18 millimeter Canon lens, as well as a used 18 to 35, which wasn't so great. To conclude, I got lights, I got tripod, I got nice audio, and I got a primary camera that will be upgraded. That's one of the things that's on my list. So let's go over what I still need to get, and that is a motorized slider, which I actually bought this week uh, because I wanna be able to capture myself in a cool angle and with movement as I'm working uh, in the shot. The Edelkrone Slider Plus M Short is what I got with a motor kit. And um, I chose to go with Edelkrone instead of Rhino or Syrup, which also has these motor control systems. Edelkrone, the brand overall, was very, very thought out. And uh, we'll take a closer look once we get that here, hopefully soon. Second on the list, second on the list is a full-size gimbal because that just kind of smooths out everything. I'm looking at the Zhiyun Weeble Lab right now. It is still not out yet. Maybe it'll be out by the time this video comes out. And last but not least, the upgraded eye of the operation, a new primary camera on the list is, of course, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K, which can do 4K 60 and 1080p at 120 frames per second. I've watched almost all the reviews for this camera and people are comparing it with systems that are two to three times the price and it's very, it's comparable. So it's like, it is just as good as a GH5 with an Atmos Ninja, which is like a four grand system. The Blackmagic is only 1300. <laughs> it's insane. But there is a couple drawbacks to the Pocket 4K. I'm gonna call it the Pocket 4K because the name is ridiculously long. Um, and that is, you have to get an array of accessories to be able to film yourself for a vlog type sort of um, style. But even with all these accessories, there is a bright side. And that is that uh, accessories can be transferable. Yeah, not a big deal. And another thing to consider when upgrading your gear or especially your camera, you need to be able to edit that raw footage. And we found this out with a GoPro recording in 4K. The computers that we have right now cannot handle a file size that big. So in order for us to upgrade the video quality, we need to upgrade our computer systems as well so that we can edit with no problems 
and uh, be able to produce really good content for you guys. Hopefully this will give you a good idea of the cost of starting your own filmmaking career. Uh, it is not cheap. If you want to do good work, you have to invest. Right now my day job is funding all of this, so <laughs> I'm running low on cash. <laughs> but regardless, this cost is worth it for me because YouTube and filmmaking is the path to success for Studio Caves and what I want to ultimately do with it. And hopefully you guys will be part of the process and part of the journey along the way. To conclude this episode, I got one more quick update. Uh, I discovered late last week that Bend, Oregon, is hosting Beyond Design Design Conference event for three days starting Thursday, October 25th, which is tomorrow. Uh, ben and I got tickets to go check it out. You'll see it in the next weekly update. Stay tuned. That's it for me, guys. We are constantly self-reflecting, improving what we do, and sharing our story along the way. Please like this video if you found this valuable. Subscribe if you haven't already and want to see more of me. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week.